Welcome here in Studio One, Leonberg. Our today topics is uh, fire protection and accessibility and the minefield between these two uh, things. My name is Olaf Thies. I'm the architect and the BIM project leader for Geetze. So, when we start thinking about these topics, fire protection and accessibility, there seems to be a huge difference between these two topics. First of all, we'll have to define these words. What does accessibility mean and what does fire protection mean and how do they come together? Of course we know that on a fire protection door we need a door closer like this one here. This is our TS5000 Easy Line and uh, the specialties with this thing I will, uh, I will come to that later on. With this in mind, of course, the first question we'll have to ask is who benefits from accessibility? But maybe the better question is who does not? Because sometimes in our lives we will of course need accessibility or barrier-free doors, doors that are easy to open, doors that are very visible for us, that can be seen from far away. And maybe we would like to go skiing and then uh, of course we have a broken leg sometimes. And in these cases, the barrier-free door is good for us. So, well, what are the things we'll have to watch when we think about accessibility on doors? It's not just how easy it is to open, it's about orientation, it's about communication and usability. There are so many aspects and I, I have uh, just put in here a few of them, but um, they are special, especially uh, made for doors. So what's about orientation? It's not just the orientation um, when, when, you, uh, when you're standing right in front of a door, it's the orientation um, outside the building. Is there something we can concentrate our views on? So these, um, these entrances, are they really visible? Is there a huge contrast we can watch and think, yeah, that's it, we'll have to go there. This is one thing. So reaching the building and when we are inside the building, we'll have to orientate ourselves inside. So what, is, uh, what are the possibilities to, um, to get information when you cannot see anything? So, but you can feel. This is the, the, the two senses that you can use when you are inside a building and cannot see something. It's about um, touching the ground. It's about something, it's, it's about feeling, um, feeling surfaces. So here is, um, here is a plan of a building which you can feel and you can feel surfaces and you know, ah, well, now the things that I feel under my foot is, uh, is soft and so this might be carpet and the other thing might be stone and now I know where am I. Well, of course, you know these braille uh, letters, but when you are not blind from your birth, then it is better to feel, to touch letters that are yeah, the, the, the normal ones. You know from your, uh, from your imagination what kind of letter is it now here. And you can feel surfaces and so on and so on. So, first of all, it's about orientation. But please do not just think of sitting in a wheelchair. It's about using canes or other help uh, to uh, keep moving. So, you'll need, of course, space. Space in front of the door and behind the door as well. So how is it able, how are you able to, to use this door? How are you able to grab the handle, 
to uh, push the door w away from you and how are these things related to each other? Of course, there is um, a space that uh, you should use, but um, mostly uh, this is different in many countries and well, you'll have to ask your local uh, dealer or your local architect to know what kind of um, measurement you know you, you, you'll have to use um, in your country. So mostly it's about 1 meter, 1 meter 20 to 1 meter 50 um, before and behind the door to have uh, the possibility when you are in a wheelchair to get round and uh, have enough space to use the lever and uh, the handle. When it comes to using these doors, to use the handles, to use um, to, to open it, wouldn't it be best if there were no doors at all? So of course, we'll, we have these hold open devices and well, in the normal case, there is no door at all. But when it comes to a fire, of course, or an emergency in other case, you are able to, or of course, these doors uh, will shut. So are you still able to open it? How much force do you need to open it anyway? In this case, well, I have got a scale here um, and you are able to measure how hard it is. But um, first of all, look at your national standards. So I can tell you what's in, uh, what's in your country or how, the, uh, how are the, the, the forces in your country. Um, ask for it. And of course, ask where is the point you'll have to use the scale. So, of course, there are standards, but most of these standards, they uh, come to how hard is it to open it with a door closer. And this is very, very hard to measure. Um, there are so many different things that uh, define how hard is it, uh, how, well, how heavy is the door, and where's the handle, how wide is the door, and so on and so forth. So all these things, all these uh, parameters, they come to one point. Is it possible to use this door in case of an emergency when the fire protection stands on the front? And now we'll have, well, an example. Here in this case, of course, um, it was too late. The fire went everywhere. But what if the fire protection door will have kept shut? I have a photo of a fire protection door that, uh, that was able to keep the fire inside one room. By the way, behind this door, <laughs> there was a shoe store and uh, they didn't even know that it was burning on the other side until the firemen and the police arrived uh, outside. Of course, you need a door closer like this to shut the door and keep it shut. But what's all the fuss about the door closer when uh, it comes to a pressurized staircase? So in this case, we'll have two aspects uh, to view a little bit closer. So of course there's the normal case when there is no pressure um, on the staircase. So in this case it's just about well closing the door and keeping it barrier free and accessible. So we'll just um, we'll just just adjust this spring in a very mm, easy way. But what if it comes to an airflow that is pressurizing the door? Well, you can, you can imagine that the door is uh, some kind of a kite um, 
that is very that is pushed very hard by the wind. So you know that some kites are very very hard to control, and it's it's the same thing with doors, the door closer, and the pressurized staircase. Have a look at the normal case. In this case, of course, we know the width of the door, the height of the door, we know how heavy this door is, and we know, of course, which door closer we use. We have the possibility uh, to even calculate um, almost exactly how heavy or how, yeah, um, how difficult it is to open this door. Let's say, in the normal case, with no pressurization, then, well, everything should be fine. But, in the other case, when the staircase is pressurized, if there is a fire somewhere and we need to have the fire outside the staircase, then the airflow will shut the door. And then it is, of course, very, very hard to open this door. So it's not just the door closer you'll have to, um, to overturn, it's the door closer and the airflow. In this case, of course, it is so hard that, well, I'll bet no one uh, on the world is able to open this door. So we need uh, another technical thing to have it done. Well, as you can see, we have about five possibilities to close this door and to keep it shut in a normal way. But there is only one possibility to open it in case of the pressurization of the staircase. So this only one possibility is by using a door drive, an automatic door drive with a battery inside. And the conclusion of this is please ask us beforehand. Let's plan together. We know all the different, uh, the different requirements that are on just one door. These requirements determine each other. So, is it just accessibility and the fireproof door? But there are many, many things uh, more that are on one door. Maybe it is um, an escape route. Maybe the acoustic rating should be in a special way and so on and so on. All these things, they come together in just one door and we are able to plan these things with you. Ask us in your local country, ask us about all the nation standards so in your country we know what to do. So that we will be able to help you out and not just uh, think about well, there are problems uh, that we have to solve on the building side. No, we, can, we know all these things beforehand and please do not let it come to the catastrophe on the building side. Please plan the doors before they get, um, get to a, a complete disaster. We are able to get you your door that has the parameters to work with. With this, I'm done with, this, um, with these topics and I hope I could help you somewhere out. I would be happy to visit you in your country and uh, in this case, well, help you with your BIM objects. So, see ya, hopefully uh, in person next time and thank you for your attention.